Fall fast approaching and a three day weekend around the corner, now is a great time to dust off your tools and tackle some of those DIY projects you've been putting off all summer. One of my favorite ways to change the look of a room and give it instant character is through paint and molding. This can be done relatively inexpensively with basic tools and it makes a great weekend DIY project. Today I'm going to walk you through the steps we took to transform our living room in just a few days. We moved into this house last month and one thing I instantly fell in love with was this gorgeous archway. But the rest of the house is pretty boring so the best way to fix that is through molding. Crown molding is important because it makes the room feel more finished and it can really add value. When it comes to crown molding, there's lots of different styles and materials you can use depending on your budget and preference. Lowe's has a great selection, both in-store and online, and I ended up choosing this one from Ikenna Millwork. It's made from polyurethane, so it's lightweight like foam, and it comes primed and ready to paint. Our molding comes in 94 inch strips, so we made sure to carefully measure and order a bit more than we needed, just in case. One thing to note here is that our walls are plaster. Plaster was used on homes built until the late 50s, and they can be trickier to work with than drywall. I think your experience will really depend on the age and condition of your plaster, and also the technique used to install the molding. For this project, you'll need your crown molding, measuring tape, a stud finder, a 16 gauge nail gun with two and a half inch nails, a saw, a tube of caulk, putty, and paint. Since our walls are plaster and we wanted to be extra safe, we also used a good construction adhesive. The molding is lightweight enough for the adhesive to hold it to the wall, even if we miss the studs. As long as you are nailing into the studs though, that step isn't necessary. It's a two-person job, so grab a friend and a ladder before getting started. I enlisted the help of my cute apprentice. It's best to paint your molding before installing it so that you'll only have to do touch-ups at the end. I used Sherwin-Williams in pure white. Now, there's a few different ways to go about cutting crown molding, but the most common method is to position it up against the fence and table. This will eliminate the need for compound miter cuts. Our DeWalt saw is equipped to handle compound cuts and large pieces of trim, but figuring out all those complicated angles can be tricky. We try to keep this tutorial simple so that you can use a regular saw or even a miter box. The important thing to remember is that the molding must be positioned upside down, so the part that touches the wall is against the fence, and the ceiling side is against the table. Our living room only has inside corners, so we only had to make two different types of cuts. Let's start with our right side cut. We'll need a 45 degree angle, which is half of our 90 degree corner. So we're going to rotate our saw 45 degrees to the left. Then position our crown on the left side of the saw, making sure it sits flush up against both the fence and table. We used painter's tape to mark the edge of our molding so we can get consistent cuts every time. Since this is our first piece, we're just trimming off the very end. Now before we nail it to the wall, we need to trim the other end as well. When it comes to connecting your molding pieces, the easiest way is to simply butt the straight cuts up next to each other. Most carpenters recommend cutting your joints at an angle to minimize the visibility of the seam. This is called a scarf joint. But with this material, there was no noticeable difference in the seams. And since it won't expand and contract like wood does, we kept things simple and made straight 90 degree cuts. With both ends of our first piece now cut, we applied our adhesive and positioned it snugly to the wall in the corner. Then we nailed into both the wall and the ceiling. We're using a Bostitch 16 gauge nail gun for this, and I wouldn't trust an 18 gauge nail to have the holding power, especially in plaster. You wanna make sure the nail goes below the surface so you can putty the hole and sand over it later. Neither drywall nor plaster are meant to grip nails, so nail into the studs if you can. We used a stud finder to locate ours behind the plaster and found they were spaced 16 inches apart. If you don't want any marks on the walls, you can use tape to mark the studs. We did this ahead of time to make installation easier. Because our molding is lightweight and we used adhesive, we found that it held up just fine even without hitting the studs. When you reach the corner, you'll want to measure to your longest point against the wall. 
Measure carefully to avoid cutting too short, as there's not much room for error here. For your left side corner piece, the cutting process is the same as the first time, except you move this off 45 degrees to the right and cut on the right side. This cut plus your first cut will give you a perfect 90 degree angle. Now most walls are not exactly 90 degrees, so you may need to use an angle finder if yours are really off. But spackle and caulk can go a long way to hide imperfections. Once you've got one wall down, you can simply repeat the process with the first 45 degree cut that you started with. And once you've got all the molding up, go back and fill the nail holes and any larger gaps with spackle. Next, you can take your caulking gun and apply a bead where the molding meets the wall and ceiling. After everything dries, lightly sand over your spackling and finish up with touch-up paint. After our crown molding was done, we freshened up the room with new paint. I continued Sherwin-Williams Pure White on the walls and chose Loggia for the doors and trim, which is a pretty warm mushroom color. We even had time to hang a wall mural, which we framed out with more Ikenna decorative trim. And we finished the room off with a fancy ceiling medallion and a new chandelier. It's the little details that make all the difference, and in just a few days we were able to add a ton of character to this space. Now we have a great foundation to start layering in furniture and accessories. You can find a lot more details about this project, including some helpful tips and lessons we learned in the blog tutorial linked in the description below. Next up, we've got our new floors going in, so make sure you check back in a few weeks to see the progress.